The Christmas season is upon us. Tis the season for giving, and tis the season for Christmas trees. I'm gonna make a Christmas tree dress. First, I scrolled through Pinterest for hours and created an inspiration board. Christmas tree time! I went to Joann's to get a bunch of fabric and I just got pretty much everything green except for this. I got this like mesh because I wanted it to match my skin. I got this lime green chiffonny fabric. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this but it, I like it. I like the color a lot. I got this dark green velvet although it kind of looks gray on the camera and this for the lining. I'm using all sorts of different kinds of greens. I got this green and burgundy tulle because this dress is gonna be poofy 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 and of course jingle bells i want this dress to be green jingly puffy and joyous i'm gonna make a velvet underdress a tulle with pleating gathers for the overdress and a mesh top and i'll attempt to make my own ornaments first step is making an actual pattern i took measurements from my waist my bust as well as my hips a puppy I'm going to be using this emerald green stretch velvet for the form-fitting strapless underdress. This is essentially the pattern that I made, and then I went to work on the mock-up. I just used this plain cotton fabric, and I just tweaked it wherever it needed to be tweaked. The waist was a little too long, and the zipper was a little funky, so I fixed that. I then laid out my fashion fabric, and I cut out the pattern. This dress does not have a waist seam, but it does have darts, and I'm going to be just Based stitching them or what have you in place and then stitching over them by machine later. I sewed the darts into all of the pieces and then I sewed all of those pieces together. This literally looks silver but it is green. I don't understand. There we go. It's a little bit more green. This looks so weird because this literally looks like it's gold and this looks gray but I, in real life this is like a dark emerald green and this is like a foresty light green. It looks gold and gray! Okay, now you can kind of see it. Yeah, it's more green. Green. Gold. Gray. Gold. Gray. Anyways, next I'm going to be having the right sides of the fashion fabric and the lining facing each other, and I'm going to sew the top. Like so. I'm going to be sewing the seam to the lining, just so that it helps keep the lining from showing in the front of the dress and just keeps it a very nice, clean edge. It was difficult getting a neat edge because the fabrics were so slippery, but I managed. Next is my least favorite part, inserting the zipper. Inserting a zipper is already tedious enough without a fly getting in the way, but oh well. I guess these flies must be more excited about zippers than I am. I'm not going to be describing this part because it was hell and took me forever. Anyways, it's late at night and it's dark and I got the zipper done, did, and now I'm wishing that I had used an invisible zipper, but this is what I had, so maybe I'll take it out in the future and replace it, but ta-da! By the way, using an actual zipper foot makes sewing in zippers somewhat easier. Then I sewed the seam below the zipper on both the lining fabric and the velvet, and I pinked the edges. Whew! Oh, all right, that's done. Now the hem! Now, when I said these fabrics were slippery and hard to work with, I meant it. This stretch velvet was not my friend. Now, to keep the hem from bubbling and hanging over at the bottom, I pinned it in place while wearing it, and then I sewed it. Next up, mesh. Now you can barely see the pattern pieces I've cut out and put on the table in this video, but it's there. Anyway, these are the patterns I made and I'm making it a V-shape in the back. I will be hand sewing this onto the dress bodice because the fabric is so delicate. I will be using a catch stitch, aka cross stitch, to secure this onto the dress. This will ensure that the thread will not show through onto the outer velvet fabric. And with that done, the main part of the dress is now finished. Let's get our hands on some tulle now. This outer layer of the dress is going to be made out of a ton of tulle. I got this green tulle as well as some burgundy tulle. I envisioned the top to be covered in these tiny, tedious tulle pleats, which was wild trying to accomplish, but I managed. I pinned these strips of pleated tulle to where I wanted them to lay on the bodice. 
And then I sewed together the two tiered tulle skirts of the dress. <laughs> Try saying that three times fast. Two tiered tulle, two tiered tulle, tulle. Oh my god. Anyway, I gathered them all up. They were essentially very long rectangles with tons and tons of gathers. Um, and yeah. <laughs> We've got one puffy tulle tree dress going on. But just one layer was not enough puff for me, so I did another layer underneath with burgundy tulle. Again, I cut two really long rectangles and gathered them all up. The first tier is going to be green again, just so that way it stays green on top. You can see through to the velvet underneath, and the bottom part of that underskirt is going to be burgundy. And now that I finished my two tool type petticoat like things, I can put them together with the burgundy underneath and I can swish around in them. JK, I'm going to sew them to the actual dress. I'm really loving this deep emerald green velvet that shows through the tool of the bodice. I also love the pleating that I did. And I also pinked the edges of the tool just to give it a little bit more texture. Yeah! Now, a Christmas tree is not a Christmas tree without ornaments, so I'm going to be attempting to make my own Christmas ornaments out of fabrics and ribbons. I was trying out different color combos, and I really liked this sparkly tool over this red organza. It gave a nice shimmery effect. And then I cut out these circles and attempt to make it an ornament shape, um, but then I tried a different shape out, just got really creative with this drop type Dr. Susie ornament shape, and... I, oh, they're pretty, but I wasn't in love with them. I set the ornaments aside for now and started working on the Christmas tree hat. I'm going to make it out of felt and velvet. I cut out these cone-shaped uh, patterns to cut out on the velvet, and I just connected them together so that way I didn't have to sew them. Then I sewed the felt part of the hat with a cross stitch all the way up to the point and then I draped the velvet over top. I folded the edge under so I could hide it and then I stitched up the seam with a large back stitch. Then I folded the bottom edge under and sewed it in place. And I had a very pointy base for a Christmas tree hat. Now I take whatever's left of the green tool and I'm just gonna pleat it up on the hat and Make it all poofy and Christmas tree like. I pleated the tool and secured it with pins. Iron isn't working. You can always just use your regular iron. I cut out long rectangles of the tool and pleated them, and I'm going to pin them and sew them onto the base of the hat. I'm going to be using this sparkly lace to make a star for the top of the Christmas tree hat. And I just layered them up and added sequins to give it extra sparkle. For the ornaments, I'm going to be using beads. Pretty simple. I sewed all the ornaments on individually and added a ribbon and there is the Christmas tree hat. Nice and freaking adorable. Okay, so I wasn't liking the ornaments I was making so I went to Joann's and like a bunch of their Christmas stuff was already 50% off so I just got these little guys. I feel like they'll come across like at a distance more of Christmas ornaments because they are Christmas ornaments and they're like round and not weird shaped. Hmm. I got this idea from my mom to put a big ribbon in the back. So I got this like burgundy silky fabric to match the burgundy tool on the under like petticoat layer. And I'm gonna make like a big ribbon, hopefully. I cut out two rectangles, sewed them together to make them longer. I pinked the seam edge and then on the edges, I just folded it over and folded it over again and sewed it down. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, how lovely are your branches? Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, how lovely are your branches? Not only green in summer's heat, but also winter's snow and sleet. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, how lovely are your branches? Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. I think you get the idea. I finished the dress. Now I'm going to try it on and you can watch me wear it. Time for me to hop right into that little Christmas tree dress. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I really love the velvet underdress. I love the poofiness of the tulle and how the burgundy shows through. I like the mesh top so that it gives the illusion that the entire dress is strapless as well. 
I wanted this dress to insinuate Christmas tree, and I can say I got that. The twirlability is top tier in this dress. I almost fell over a couple times. This dress is absolutely positively kitschy as heck, and it makes me feel adorable. Twinning. <laughs> It's green. It's green too. This is worth it. The hat came out hella cute, and I'm just surprised at how much I enjoy making hats. I made a little pumpkin hat in October, and I really, really loved it. And now, after all the hard work, it's time for a moment of rest. Okay, I'm done. Now back to serving looks. Hello! Making a lot of boogers today? Yeah, you eat lots of boogers too. All right, that is all. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm done. Bye.